So this comes with Windows 10 Home. What the luck? Come on. Let's get rid of that Windows Home. Let's get some Windows Pro. Copy and paste my code from the description. You can also get Office 2019. Just paste my code. Woof. It's Windows Pro time. Tell you, oh dear champs, this is why you buy the XPS 15. It is a super powerful beast. So if you champs are new around here, come on, sub up, join the Wood Train. I've got a lot more videos on this XPS 15 coming very soon. Review will be out tomorrow. I've compared the screen, done gaming reviews, content creation reviews. I've done everything on this XPS 15. No one's tested it more than me. So if someone else comes out with a review and they reckon they've done the testing, no, no chance. Because every waking hour has basically been testing this machine. And it's not even possible that someone done more testing. This is the i7 versus i9 comparison. And I went along with the narrative. And I even said it myself. But I was wrong. And the narrative was, only get the i9 if you got the work case for it. So if you got a multi-threaded load that needs extra two cores. No, 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 no. That is not how it is. Especially with this XPS 15 that you can overclock it, undervolt it. The performance is out of this world. I'll show you what's happening in Cinebench in a minute in terms of performance per watt. But the main thing here is not only is it great in multi-threaded workloads where you would expect it to be having the extra two cores, it is absolutely smashing it when it comes to single core. I'm talking single core speeds of 5 gigahertz. It can hit 5 gigahertz. Yes, you have to undervolt it. You overclock it because this is overclockable, I thought, no way, what's the point of an overclockable CPU in this XPS 15? It's not going to get the most out of it. Believe me, it does. I mean, it wouldn't be the absolute most. Obviously, if you had a gaming laptop, you'd probably be able to get more out of it. But when you're hitting 5 gigahertz and it makes an absolute massive difference, you'll see in the Photoshop benchmark later where it's basically single core and it's really sensitive to frequency when it's able to hit 5 gigahertz, it's actually of a magnitude faster than the i7. And that's basically mostly a single core test in that Photoshop. It's not a matter of if you've got the work case scenario, it's going to be faster in every scenario, especially in this XPS 15 where you can undervolt it and overclock it. Now what you see is we're doing a Cinebench run. You have stock i7, you have undervolted. They're undervolted by 100 millivolts. The actual i7 can go up to 150 millivolts and the i9 can go up to 130, but I just left it at 100. Most people will be able to get up to minus 100. So I left it at that. And what is astounding about this test is, no matter what happens, after the boost clocks are over, this is going to hit 56 watts. Whether you undervolt it, overclock it, doesn't matter. Even with the i9 overclockable, it'll come down to 56 watts after it's finished boosting. That's how Dell have baked it in. Now, I could not believe what I was seeing here. Because what for what, clock for clock, the i9 is exactly the same as the i7. And now think about this exactly the same wattage per clock but it's got an extra two cores that's the main thing so for example stock it will settle down at around three gigahertz at 56 watts both of them three gigahertz the difference is the i9 is doing it with eight cores so at 56 watts three gigahertz eight cores i7 three gigahertz six cores you would expect the i9 to be lower frequency it is that much better in performance per watt not only that it's nearly 10 degrees cooler stock. Now let's get on to it undervolted. 56 watts undervolted equals with both of them 3.4 gigahertz. So again, at the same wattage, 56 watts, we're getting 3.4 gigahertz on the i7 and the i9. And again, the i9 has eight cores. That is blowing me away because I did not expect eight cores to be able to perform the same frequency as the six cores. I expected it to be lower frequency. And... It's even cooler again with eight cores going the same speed as six cores, same undervolt. It is, it's not 10 degrees cooler now, but it's like three to five degrees cooler. There could be some variations in, you know, the thermal paste or whatever in temperature, but the performance per watt stands. That i9 performance per watt is much better than the i7. To be able to pull the same frequency with an extra two cores and even be cooler is just mind blowing to me. And the fact that you can overclock it to the i9 and get those five gigahertz clock speeds with low CPU sort of single threaded usage. And I'm not talking about when it's under 50 degrees, which is thermal velocity boost. I'm talking it'll hit five gigahertz when it's already hot. 
amazing performance there with the i9 versus i7. Okay, so what does that mean in the real world? So this is a Photoshop benchmark. And what you need to know about this Photoshop benchmark, it's mostly single threaded. There are some multi-core bits to it, but it's mostly single threaded. There are some GPU effects in there too. Now, this XPS 15 i9 is just like smashing records in Windows laptops. If you don't know already, the Adobe suite is optimized for Macs now. So it's not surprising the Mac i9 with eight cores is faster. But usually the Windows laptops are nowhere near it. But this one is virtually the same as the i9 Mac when we're talking the i9 of the XPS 15. Now look at the difference in the score between the two Macs, okay? There's a little difference, right? Because that should only be the difference because you have one Mac with six cores, the other Mac with eight cores, and still there's only a little bit of difference because this is mostly single threaded, this test. But go have a look at the differences between the XPS 15 i9 and i7. There is a massive difference in the score and that all comes down to that i9. They're both undervolted in this test, but the i9 is overclocked too. So we were hitting up to five gigahertz and that's all down to those clocks, all right? So it's not just multi-threaded, being able to hit up to five gigahertz and it was maintaining 4.7 to 4.9, mostly through that test. Unbelievable. So you can clearly see the advantage is not just in multi-threaded situations. So, okay, so when it comes to my famous render test here that tested like every single laptop, well, there's actually no difference because the Adobe updates have basically made software encoding and GPU encoding, you know, GPU bound rather than CPU. It used to be more of a CPU test. And as you'll see here, the XPS 15, very competitive with much more powerful laptops when it comes to software encoding. That's basically hitting the GPU now, not so much the CPU, but then flip it around and go to hardware encoding. It's like right up there on top of the list there. So excellent performance from both of them doesn't really make difference four six cores because we're not really hitting the cpu that much compared to what it used to be with the software encoding so here we have lightroom 74 raw nf to jpeg so this is exporting raw photos to jpegs in lightroom and this is basically a cpu test so it really pegs the cpu cores all cores at once like a hundred percent and as you'll see there xps i9 on top these are the undervolted scores on both the xps 15s here the mac that is the 218 version six core and as i've told you the mac is optimized for adobe these days um that is still very competitive that mac and that is six cores but still it doesn't compare to the eight cores of the xps 15 and stock even 137 with the xps 15 i9 eight cores now you go down to the i7 it's around about two minutes under vaulted and that's obviously with six cores. So there's nearly like 30 seconds difference between the both of them. And you might think 30 seconds isn't that much, but this is only like a two minute render. Can you imagine if you exported 750 photos? It'll be 10 times 30 seconds. Yeah, big gains there with the extra two cores and the extra performance per watt because it can maintain the same clocks, same wattage, as the i7, get massive gains there. Okay, here is Puget Systems Premiere Pro benchmark. I suggest you go get their After Effects benchmark, their Photoshop benchmark, and their Premiere Pro benchmark, because their Premiere Pro benchmark is epic. It plays back all the footage, all the different frame rates, ProRes, RED, Canon, every single bit of footage. It is so comprehensive. And as you can see here, the performance of the extra two cores plus the extra single threaded speed you can get equals a much better performance in Premiere Pro when, you know, I doubt with H.264 stuff you're going to notice, but if you're going to ProRes or Red Raw footage or you're introducing a lot of CPU effects, the single core speed and the extra two cores that's a massive difference between them. Now here is just basically CPU test. That benchmark was the overall system. This is just CPU, so it has 30 frames per second footage and 60 frames per second footage. Now the difference between the 30 frames per second footage on the top scales absolutely correctly. You got around, you know, a score of 59, let's say 60, and you got a score of 40. Round that off and say 40. That would scale exactly right. 60 versus 40, that's what an extra two cores would give you. But then go down to the bottom where it gets into more heavy duty stuff like 60 frames per second. This is where the high clock speeds and the extra two cores are going to come in because the gap widens now. It's nearly double the sort of performance there when it comes to live playback. And playback is the most important. Export, I really don't care about that much, but it's the playback, right? 
31 versus 17 when it comes to 60 frames per second. So that extra two cores, high clock speed, making the difference there again. Okay, now let's get into some After Effects. And in After Effects, there are tests for like Cinema 4D in there. So this tests the overall system, GPU and CPU. They've both got the same GPU, but this is the score of the i7. Then we'll flip over to the i9. And then I'll just amalgamate the scores together. I just wanted to show you this graph so you could go through all the sections. So you can see the Cinema 4D, the tracking, the warp stabilizer out of 3D tracking so you could see individually each one. One thing to note I actually haven't told you is the i7 does have 16 gigs versus 32 gigs in the i9. Now that will make a difference but I've already tested 16 versus 32 but that comes nowhere near accounting for the actual real difference between these two because most of the time it was single figure difference 32 gigs compared to 16. So anyway, would I recommend the i9 over the i7? Well, last year it was just like, if you just wanted the fastest, you know, it's a little bit faster. It is going to be faster, but it's not a big deal between the i7 and the i9. This year it's completely different, especially in this XPS 15, being able to undervolt it, being able to overclock it. The performance per watt maintaining the same sort of clocks as the i7, but with an extra two cores and even lower temperature yeah, it is well worth it. My recommendation to you is if you're a content creator, definitely try and get to the i9. I'll get the i9 before upgrading the RAM. I'll get the i9 before upgrading the SSD because you can always upgrade that later. If you can get to the i9, get to it. In gaming, it's not going to make much difference. I have tested Firestrike. There was literally no difference. I tested PUBG and yeah, it performed a little bit better. I will do a specific gaming video comparing the i9 and the i7 once the new BIOS comes out and because I can't get matching BIOSes at the moment. So when the next BIOS update comes out, I'll be able to do that. There's not really going to be that much difference. The extra two cores doesn't make any difference. Yes, the performance per watt will because you'll be able to maintain a higher clock at a lower wattage. But um, yeah, that i9 is worth it. Every single penny in this. And I was 100% wrong. It's not just for multi-threaded. It's just for everything all around. It is just a much better chip, and especially when you can undervolt it and overclock it. Amazing. Yeah, it, it really is amazing. And thank you, guys. This was a lot of testing. I mean, this is hours of testing, but um, thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Tally ho.